at this point I've already made two videos about timing this engine or all these Chrysler distributor engines pretty much the same three cylinder four cylinder um, the fives are a little bit different they but they still have a, a link that you that rotates the pickups underneath the flywheel so they're they're not a, truly a distributor engine but functionally equivalent and it occurred to me that uh, I had mentioned about checking the uh, the, the crankshaft to flywheel relationship to make sure that the key hasn't been uh, uh, cut or compromised in any way. And I think this is pretty serious because I just ran into a guy at the boat show, as a matter of fact, yesterday, with a Johnson uh, two-cylinder, probably 50 some model, that said he kept shearing keys, and we had a chat about that. So I've taken uh, the spark plugs out well, the top spark plug out. This engine being its a uh, C CD high voltage discharge type, it, this thing has NGK BUHs in it. It's what it had in it when when I got it. They're fairly new. You know, they last dang near forever unless you contaminate them with aluminum. But then you probably ruin the engine anyway when you do that. Um, so I've turned the flywheel around and. Uh, you know, in the right direction, don't want to damage the water pump if you can't help it. Uh, in this operation, you're going to turn it back and forth a little bit, but uh, you know, you're doing it for a good reason. I've got it on zero right at the moment. Uh, the tab mark is lined up with the zero on the flywheel. And I'm going to feel in here for the top of the piston. I can also immediately feel that the top of the piston is way up close to the top, so that's a good sign. And I'm going to rock the engine back and forth just a little bit. And I feel it go down a little there, go down a little there, and it's like moving not at all right in that range. And I can also feel all the, the slop in all the crank and uh, the crank pins because, you know, this one is all the way up, one's all the way down, and the other two are halfway or, well, the crank is halfway, but the pistons aren't. Uh, and I can feel the, the back and forth of the, of the uh, slop in the engine, the tolerance is the engine, and this one is pretty tight, as a matter of fact. You get a feel for these things, you can look at this and almost tell how much wear them, you know, if the motor is okay or it's ooh, got serious problems. Um, and now that I'm, I'm pretty sure my, uh, well, I'm almost dead sure that my key is fine, and my timing tab looks like it's uh, adjusted on the money because you can loosen these things and slide them back and forth. Now, if you really wanted to get super accurate about it, the factory, uh, uh, if you were a factory mechanic, worked at a big shop or something like that, uh, you'd have a set of gauges. Uh, the factory would supply you with a, a, a gauge that's screwed in the, in the spark plug hole, and they had the sliding parts and marks that were numbered or lettered or something other, and you look them up in a chart or whatever, um, and each model of motor would have a line or a gauge you would use to determine where top dead center is. Well. That's well and good, but in the uh, car engine and motorcycle engine world, we kind of did it differently. And if most of the manufacturers, including Chrysler, actually has has uh, thousands of an inch below top dead center specs in their book, if books, if you dig for it, and you use this. A dial indicator. Now, this is not a fancy one. Come from Harbor Freight. They have a pretty darn good, you know, Chinese made, they have a pretty darn good reputation. I use this one to replace my uh, nice Starette that I inherited years ago. That got busted all the, the junk. And I clamp on a piece of steel over here on the side with a C clamp, stick this on, put the plunger right on the top of the piston, rock it back and forth, watch that, and, you know, find my highest point, and it'll be my zero. And then when you turn it to, in this case, it's got a 36 degree mark on it. The factory will give you a spec of how many thousands below top dead center that should be. And uh, that's a super accurate way to check it. Or in some cases, if you're, uh, this has got a permanent mark in the flywheel here. Some engines will have decals and whatnot because they, the uh, different flywheels, different engines, and they'll just use a decal, which I think is pretty cheap. Uh, those decals, uh, by the time, you know, us gearheads get them, get these motors and mess with them those decals are gone, so you need some way to, to uh, reestablish that reference mark. All right, now once you've just determined that 
hey, keyway is good, and timing tab is setting where it's supposed to be. And uh, so now my distributor, I need to check where it's, how it's oriented. Now on the Chrysler's, there's a big sort of inverted T mark. Well, it's, it's a distorted T with the top of the T really long. Now let me get the camera and move it and get down on top of it so you guys can see it. And uh, the glare right now is pretty vicious because it's late in the evening. You can see that it has, this, it has this long bar that's supposed to be lined up and that short leg right between the teeth. When, when you're set on when you're set on zero over here. So nothing too awfully mysterious about that. In the later video I cover how to, uh, to, to set this belt. And yes, in almost every case if you have to replace this belt you have to pull the flywheel off, which is not too bad. They provide three holes and a regular you know, automotive type steering wheel puller rig will work just fine on here. Maybe once in a while you might find one that's seriously stuck, but you know, you can put some juice on it and let it set overnight. And if it'll get down in the keyway, that'll help break it loose. And there's two bolts to take the distributor off here and here. And you can pull those out and then just let the distributor just gently hang down on its, on its wires, pull the flywheels, push the belt out. I don't know of any of these that the uh, belt will go over the flywheel. Anyway, that's, uh, that's really all it is to it. And once, you've, once you know your, your uh, flywheel is uh, synced up in the right place with your crankshaft, and that whole deal is synced up with the distributor in the right place, and then you can go on to the next video and actually set the timing.